Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw, and I'm playing around with a photo, and I realized, uh, you know, I've been doing a number of On One videos, great product, great masking. I've said all these kind of things repeatedly, and I'll probably say them again, but um, I realized I hadn't done anything in monochrome, and so I started playing around with a black and white filter because, you know, I'm a big color guy at heart. Just to be clear, if you're uh, new here, you may not know that, but if you've been here a while, you know I like my colors. It's a thing. I just like my colors. Um, but I have certainly developed an appreciation for monochromes or black and whites, and I really like them, and I'd like to do more of them and, and kind of explore it more. Uh, it's particularly great on landscapes. There was a guy named Ansel Adams. Maybe you heard of him. He kind of made that popular a little while ago. Anyway, it's, uh, it's just fun. And what I figured out is that playing around with the black and white in on one, you know, no surprise, you have amazing control over your photo and it's a great filter. So I thought I'd walk through an edit. This isn't really like a deep dive on everything about the tool. This is really just an edit and showing off kind of the powerful results you can get doing a monochrome here in on one. So let me show you. Here's a photo and I'm just going to do some basic stuff, right? Which is going to be give it some contrast. I generally start with um, even, even for a black and white, I don't necessarily convert it to black and white right out of the gate. So uh, this one, I just kind of came in and I started balancing the light a little bit, which is what I generally consider uh, doing here in tone and color. Uh, I am going to bring the whites up. I don't do that a lot in my photos, but in a monochrome, it is something that I think about. Uh, and here I'm going to bring the blacks down a little bit. So something about like that, pretty simple, but if you look at the before and after, there it is before and then afterwards. It's a bit more dramatic, contrasty photo. You know, that's kind of what I did. I added contrast, adjusted the tones a little bit, and it creates a little bit more drama, which for me in monochrome really looks good. Um, maybe it has to do with the fact that I'm, I'm a big color guy, so I kind of like dramatic, colorful photos. And, you know, no surprise, I kind of like dramatic monochromes as well. So once I've done that, I pop over to effects. I'm going to grab the black and white filter and get started. Now, like I said uh, in the beginning of this video, there's a lot going on here. You've got this top section where, you know, you choose how you convert it. You can adjust colors. Then there's tone. Then there's toner, which is like darkroom type toners like sepia or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, and there's film grain. So I'll pop into these just to show you. Again, not super deep on any of them. Uh, but starting out, you have these options here where you can just choose kind of these styles uh, based on what you want to accentuate. Um, there's a whole bunch of more. And, you know, there's a number of these that look really good on this photo. Like that one looks pretty good. I think this inky is the one. Yeah, I like that inky. Now it's too bright, but I could adjust that because there's so many toning tools. Uh, but there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, that looks pretty sweet. I'm not going to get into that. I prefer typically to just kind of do things myself. So I'm going to hit reset and go back to me uh, basically adjusting it. And what I normally do is start here in this color response. Now, just to be clear, you can change this to channel mixer. And then all you do is just roll the slider until you just kind of get to a spot where you feel like that's the kind of photo you want to have. So that's kind of how I would use the channel mixer but I'm not going to use channel mixer. Again, I prefer to kind of have control. So what I want to do is turn this back to color and looking at the photo, I mean, there's two colors that dominate blue and green. That's no surprise. And so what I want to do is when I convert this to black and white, think about the blues and the greens, because down here are these channels where you can control the brightness of the greens and the blues. So I could go like that and increase the green or I could go to the left and decrease it, and same with the blue. To the right is going to brighten it, to the left is going to darken it. I like that quite a bit. Again, kind of have a thing for dramatic photos. It's just, I don't know, it's just what I like. So I'm going to go with a negative 100 on both green and blue, and they're creating a bit more drama in the photo, but I also just like the look of it. If you've ever seen monochrome photos taken uh, you know, that were, you could see it was shot during the daytime, but the sky is basically black, you can do that by adjusting this blue here. So that's uh, one way to kind of get that done. Now the next section is this tone section, and this is just a lot of powerful control over the image. And so, you know, every photo is going to be different. I recommend just coming in and experimenting, and I'm just going to make some adjustments here based on uh, what my experiments led me to end up with. So I'm going to go to about a 40 on contrast. Highlights are coming down, uh, you know, mid 40s, something like that. Shadows are coming down a little bit as well. And then I am going to take the whites up. And that's one of the things, as I said kind of earlier in the video, that I think about when making a black and white or a monochrome. And that is, 
I want the whites. I don't want them to get muddy or too muted. I want them to kind of pop. And so I often find myself taking the whites and kind of moving them up. You just got to be careful. You don't want to blow out anything, but you can get away with a bit more of that kind of stuff in a uh, monochrome than you can in a color photo. Um, so whites went up and blacks went down. And so far, I mean, I think it looks pretty sweet. I think that tone section, having that here in this tool is fantastic because otherwise I would have to go get another filter like Tone Enhancer and start doing some of these things. I love that it's built in. So that just looks uh, great. I'm going to skip toner for a second and go to film grain. You can apply it here. You've got a number of options based on different film types. I'm not a film grain kind of person. I'm just going to admit it. There are those who are, and that's great, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't really like noise and film grain. I tend to prefer to smooth those things, remove them from, from my photos. So I wouldn't be using film grain. I just wanted to point out that does exist here in the black and white tool, which makes a lot of sense. It goes well with it and is uh, certainly popular with a lot of folks. So it's there. I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go to this toner section. And this is, you know, acts a little bit like a split toning where you can just adjust these tones. And then, of course, you do have a bunch of different, uh, you know, presets, I guess, for lack of a better word. And as you hover over them, you can see they're named kind of accordingly. So you kind of get an idea of what the uh, color is going to look like. The cyanotype, I kind of like that silvery blue kind of look. Um, I wouldn't go that heavy. And I like this iron blue as well. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, selenium, sepia, you know, whatever it may be. I'm going to go with this cyanotype one. It's kind of less blue than the, the number two and number three. But then you can just make adjustments here and you can see that the shadows are at uh, that blue tint of 223 and the amount is 50. I just pull that down a little bit. If I go to zero, of course, it's all gone. I don't want it to be as high as it was. So I'm going to go to about 25 and I think that looks pretty awesome. So pretty happy so far. And that is really how I'm using the black and white tool. Now, there's more stuff I want to do to the photo, and that's where the next round of tools comes in. So I'm going to click on Add Filter and get the Curves tool. Now, again, same thing I said about the black and white filter will apply to Curves filter, and that is this is not a deep dive. If you don't know what Curves is, um, I recommend looking it up. I've done videos about it in other products, but basically I'm going to stay on this tab that says All and basically just place a few points here to allow me to come in and make some adjustments to the photo. And I have to be honest, a lot of this is just experimentation and just kind of playing around. And basically all I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast in the image and just looking to have a little bit more of an impactful photo. Um, and so, like I said, I'm just kind of messing around. I had a plan, but uh, you know, I tend to change them a little bit um, as I'm editing. So I think something, um, maybe go a little bit darker down here in some of the uh, dark areas, something about like that. Let me turn this off and show you the before and after. There it is before, and there it is after. I basically brightened a little bit of the brighter parts and darkened a little bit of the darker parts, created a little bit of almost like an S-curve, and in fact, I'm going to pull up some of that darkness. I don't want to overdo it. So Curves had a nice impact on the photo. There it is before, and there it is now. Curves is an amazing tool, very powerful. It's pretty much in every photo editing product and it's something I recommend getting a little bit used to. You don't have to use it all the time, but it does give you a lot of power and control over photo. And sort of getting to grips with it is a great way to understand how light and color impact your images. So um, I'm going to move on. My next thing is dynamic contrast. And these are kind of some touch-up kind of edits. I'm basically here just going to use the default amounts. But what I want to do is go ahead and get the uh, AI quick mask. And what I want to do is, because I'm applying this dynamic contrast or adding it, um, I only want to add it to certain areas, which is the mountains and the reflections of them. So I'm going to come in here and just choose Drop for the sky. And I've got a really big mouse here. And I'm also going to choose Drop for the reflection of the sky. And uh, come around like that. And now I'm going to go to Keep. And this means is basically I'm just telling on one, you know, keep this dynamic contrast wherever the areas uh, are green, which is what I'm adding now. And then the red is, of course, remove. Uh, if you haven't used AI Quick Mask, it's fantastic. I use it all the time. And it's just a, a wonderful tool to have in your tool belt. So once you've selected the areas for keep and drop, you click apply. And I need to go do some refinement here. Let me do that. And uh, then we'll move on. Okay, a couple of minor adjustments. I'm going to click Done. I think my mask looks pretty good. So I've got this mask applied to those areas that were in white. 
there it is before, and there it is after, just a little bit of crunch. And once you have the mask in place, of course, you can come in here and make further adjustments if you want to drag things uh, you know, further to the right to increase them or whatever. So I've done that, and I'm gonna copy that mask. I'm gonna use that filter again. You see me do this all the time. Um, if you've seen my Unwon videos, I'm gonna paste and invert, and that's because what I wanna do now is just reverse that move and smooth out the sky and water reflections. Again, just pure personal preference, and that is me just uh, doing something I like to do. So I've now done that, and I've got that mask applied. I can just close that filter, and that's really my full edit, my friends. I feel like I've got a really beautifully dramatic monochrome or black and white. I just think it looks fantastic. And if you look at the before and after, if I do a comparison here, you can see, I mean, we've really had a huge impact on this photo, really amped up the kind of crunchiness in the areas where I wanted it to crunch and adjusted the tones really nicely with the black and white. And of course, uh, you know, massage the light a little bit and that sort of thing. And if I just do a straight before and after, that's what we started with. And that's where we ended. A lot of this comes from the black and white filter itself, where you have all these great controls, especially in that tone section. I love that that's included. And the toner, of course, for a little bit of that, um, that bluish tint. But if I turn that off, you know, not a bad looking photo, kind of saturated in um, color, but when I make that a black and white, really dramatic and uh, powerful. Anyway, that's how I make what I call kind of a killer monochrome in just a few easy steps. It's quick, it's easy. Black and white filter works amazingly well and on one. I love it. And um, I hope to be doing more videos around black and white and, you know, some additional workflow ideas, things like that. So if there's anything you'd like me to cover, let me know down below. Otherwise, see you in the next video, my friends. Thanks for watching, tuning in, hanging out, all that stuff. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon and adios.